In a previous video, I assembled this red and blue LED soldering kit. Unfortunately, during the video I made a number of mistakes. As I noted in the video, I managed to install every single one of the LEDs on the wrong side of the board. This circuit is carefully designed to allow for a higher voltage for each of the LEDs on the right hand side of the board, and that's to allow for the higher voltage that's typically required of blue LEDs. During the video, I suggested that that was why I had to run the board at the full 12 volts to get it to operate. But if we look really closely here, we can see this transistor here is also round the wrong way. This transistor provides the drive for the LEDs on the left hand side of the board. So if nothing else, I should definitely swap this round and see if we can fix the circuit. Fortunately, over the holiday period, I was gifted two additional new tools. The first one is this PCB holder, and the second is this electric desoldering iron. Both of these will be super helpful, so let's unpack them and see if I can repair my circuit. So it looks like we need to assemble these legs. Let me just grab this screwdriver here and see if we can pop this together. Okay, I did a lot of fiddling with the adjustment there, but I'm quite happy with this now. I've left it slightly loose so that I can still turn the board around fairly easily, but I can of course lock it off slightly tighter if I choose to do so. I've adjusted these legs here to position this against the board. Unfortunately, I can't put it long ways because the LEDs here are too close to the edge and they don't fit in the jaws here, which is slightly unfortunate, but I don't think that's a particularly standard problem that we're likely to encounter in the future. The sprung section here is quite handy as well. It means that we can pull this out fairly easily without necessarily having to take everything apart entirely. That's part one, let's move that out of the way and get our desoldering iron. So as we can see here, we've got some replacement tips and a cleaning rod for the soldering iron or desoldering iron, so that's kind of nice. We have a little wet sponge stand for the desoldering iron as well. Standard UK plug. And we can see this is a Yahua brand 929D and it's 30 watts. So it looks like you can remove the cartridge by pushing in these two green clips here and prizing out the plunger. So I've just got some water in a little glass jar here. Okay, so let's plug in our desoldering iron and see how that gets on. So there is a red LED light here. I've also got my regular soldering iron that I use in most of my videos here. I'm just going to turn that on as well. And I've also got my regular tools, my regular desoldering pump, which I might use if I need to, some cheap flux, a flux pen, and some desoldering wick. Now there is some smoke coming off the desoldering iron right now, but that's perfectly normal in, for a new soldering iron. While that's happening, let's look at our circuit board again. And so, as I mentioned, this transistor here is round the wrong way. And so that's the one we're going to need to desolder once the soldering iron or desoldering iron gets up to temperature. So let's try and apply some solder to the tip of this to see if it's up to temperature and to protect it from significant oxidization. Okay, there we are. This is nice and hot and I'm able to apply solder around the tip. So as I mentioned, there's still a little bit of smoke coming off there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is smoking very slightly, but as I say, that is, that is normal and expected. So let's bring our circuit board back into view. And so this is the transistor that's upside down. So I'm gonna turn this round this way so that it's closest to me. So it's this one here, when I turn the board upside down. And so that's that transistor here. So let's see how well this operates. I'm going to push the plunger in, maybe apply a little extra solder to make sure there's a good seal. So I usually like to operate these things like so, so we'll see how this works. I'm just going to use the desoldering iron to do that. Oh, that's come out very cleanly actually, so that looks, that looks promising. Just OK, 
okay. So the component didn't just fall out, but actually there you go. So it, nice and loose, and that worked really well. So my soldering iron here has been heating up as well. Fortunately, the cables in front of me are getting a bit untidy around the camera. Um, so that might be a little bit difficult. But now this has uh, been removed, we can pop it back in the right way round. So as usual, I'm gonna use some blue tack to hold it in place. Okay, there we go. That was a bit more of a struggle than I hoped, but um, it's in now. So let's put some blue tack in to hold it in place. Okay, if anything, I've been a little bit generous there with the solder. But now we can see the transistor is in round the right way. I think what I'm going to do now is apply some power and see if that has improved the operation of the device. And we'll see how we get on from there. So I'm going to set the supply to 6 volts to start with and turn on the power. And we will connect the wire here. And we're still only getting flashing on the red side, not on the blue side. So if I turn this up to seven and a half volts, still no flashing on the blue side. Nine volts, still no flashing. And 12 volts, now we're getting flashing on both sides. So while the transistor was backwards, that isn't the only problem here. And of course the transistor could be damaged at this point. And maybe I should have tested it while I had it out the board, but nevertheless, uh, we can go ahead and we can flip around the LEDs as well. To make sure I don't make that error again, I've labeled this side R, which is currently blue, and this side B, which is currently red, so we'll see how we get on. And there you go, that comes out really easily. Just have to make sure I keep an eye on which side is the negative side when I put these back again. And again, another seamless removal, very nice. And that one just fell out. So this is working really nicely. You'll notice that most of the time I'm remembering to uh, push the plunger down here over this capturing tin here so that I don't end up with solder all over the place. But let's carry on going ahead and I'm going to zoom through hopefully and remove all these items. Okay, so I think that worked really well. Of course, that final cleanup process you saw me do there, you could of course do with some copper braid, like this one here. Be very careful with the soldering iron stand there, I'm trying to work around the camera. I might switch to the lower soldering stand that I was using previously, to be honest. But okay, so we've done the desoldering. You can actually see quite how much blue tack I'm losing every time I assemble a circuit board here, stuck on each of these components underneath. So that's interesting. But um, I think it's time we go ahead and reassemble everything. So just to make sure, blue here is going here. And again, we need to pay very careful attention to the flat side now on the LED, and that indicates the negative side. And in these LEDs, as is typical, the anvil is negative as well, but that's not always the case. It's usual, but not always the case. So in this case, those two indicators there that I'm gonna use to make sure that that is the negative side on every LED. And of course, be very careful to follow the silk string as I failed to do on the transistor last time. Before I continue, I'm just going to unplug this and so it make sure it's off. There's no power switch on the device, which is a little bit of a shame, but still pretty handy. And I don't want to be having unnecessary power draw. So here it is now unplugged. I'm just gonna turn this round like so. Okay. 
Okay, so I've reattached all of the LEDs, hopefully on the correct sides, B for blue and R for red. So hopefully that's good. Let's go and see about adding some power back again. I'm just turning my power supply down back to six volts and turning it on. And let's go ahead and connect it while it's still sitting in this stand. So make sure we get the wire colors around the right way. So black to black and red to red. Nothing at six. A little bit at 7.5. So that's definitely an improvement. And we seem to have some issues now with a few sets of LEDs. So that's at nine. And this is at 12. So definitely working at lower voltages. But it's possible that I have managed to damage something. As you can see, this device now operates correctly, and I'm able to run it at a much more modest 7.5 volts. You can see that on the power supply I've been using, this is an old Maplin unit, and if you look on the front here, hopefully you can see that slider is lined up with 7.5. Now I could of course crank that voltage to 9 or even 12 volts, and this unit will work correctly at those voltages, just with brighter LEDs. So what was wrong with it, and how did I fix it? Well, the first thing to think about is at the end of the last segment, there were a few rows and columns of LEDs that weren't illuminating correctly, and that usually indicates an LED is in backwards. Despite my best efforts, that did indeed occur, and I tracked them down using my multimeter here. So I set it to diode test mode, and I just tested any of the diodes that were in those rows and columns to see if I could identify the suspect units. When I found them, I used my new desoldering iron and took those LEDs out. They came out super smoothly, as we've already seen. Turned them around, popped them back in the board, and Unfortunately, the board still didn't work. That led me to be a bit suspicious of this transistor here. If you remember, I had it in backwards earlier, and maybe it had become weak or damaged. So again, desoldering iron, took it out, no problem. And I went ahead and popped in this transistor tester here. You may have seen me use it in a previous video. The transistor tested just fine, so back in the board it went, and that unfortunately meant that that wasn't the problem. That really only left these ICs in the middle as suspect units to test. Well, fortunately, I've got some other LED test games, such as this LED roulette game, and that indeed uses an NE555 and CD4017IC. And as you can see, they've already been removed from this board, and I placed them in here, and this is now working just fine. That indicates that either the original NE555 or possibly even the CD4017 chip have become faulty. So I was able to swap the chips between these two boards to try and find out which one, and sadly, it's both. Now, I'm not really sure why that might have been the case. At the end of the last video, you did see me crank the voltage up to higher levels, and it did briefly work at 12 volts. It turns out, actually, that an NE555 is good for up to 15 volts, and the CD4017 is actually good for up to 20 volts, so it doesn't seem that voltage is likely to be the issue here. Equally, of course, I did have some of the LEDs in backwards, and maybe they were driving pins in incorrect or unusual ways, but all of the pins on the CD4017 are actually protected by these independent signal diodes here, and that doesn't seem to have been the issue either. So if you have any ideas in the comments about what the issue might have been, do let me know. The only thing I can think of is maybe there was a bad solder joint, or potentially a short on the back of the board, as you can see it's not particularly clean even now, and so maybe that was the issue at hand. So what do I think about the tools I use to fix the board? Well, first up, we have the desoldering iron, and that has been super useful. And I really would recommend getting a desoldering iron if you do do a lot of removal of components. This one in particular seems to work great for me. I'm not quite sure how much it was. As I mentioned, both of the tools I am using in this review are really gifts, and so I don't know how much they cost. I also used this PCB stand here, and I think these take a little bit more getting used to, especially under a camera environment. So unfortunately, this little board here doesn't really suit this particular stand because of these LEDs are so close to the edge. It doesn't fit in the jaws this way around, and putting it in this way felt a bit uncomfortable. But I'm sure it's going to be really useful for bigger project boards, and I'm really appreciative that I received this as well. So I hope you found this video interesting, where I fixed, broke, and then fixed this board again. 
I'm going to have to go ahead and track down some more CD4017 chips now because I don't have any of those spare. I do fortunately have some NE555s. But nevertheless, I hope you found this video interesting and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.